Hey guys, Sean Hammond with Premier Guitar. We're at Winter NAM 2018 in Anaheim, California. We're at the J Rocket Audio Designs booth. We've got Mark Letary on guitar here, who has a new uh, signature pedal. We've also got J Rocket here, who's gonna tell us about, well, they're both gonna tell us about the pedal, but let's start off with Mark, tell him the story of how this came about. Right, so uh, I've been using J Rocket stuff for uh, several years, and we found that the Dude and the Blue Note were the two pedals that were sort of on my board all the time. Yeah. And I said, well, why don't we figure out a way to put them both into one pedal? And they said, cool. And then they were like, well, hey, we have this other concept with these graphic EQs that we're doing now. Yeah. We have this line, we did the Rockaway for Steve Stevens, right. you know, and I was like, okay, cool. So now we don't have a tone knob. So now you can literally get any tone combination you want because you are messing with frequency. Yeah, a lot more tweakable, yeah. Exactly. So uh, that's what they did. This is version 2.0, and I was using version 1.0 for, for all of last year on tour. So this does 2.0 just like barely oh, came no. out? Like, yeah. You guys just finished up 2.0 basically recently? I mean, because you sent me the one with a little bit extra gain not too long ago, and I was like, cool, done, we're, we're there. No, no, it's called the Meldy? It's called the Melody. Oh, Melody, okay, the O oh, is the little tiny dot in there. Well, I thought like Meldy, like you're melding different well, that pedals. That's, yeah, we could call it the ham sandwich. That'd be awesome. Uh, yeah, it's the Melody, because, you know, my initials are in there, ML, and then the O is sort of like Mark Letiri Overdrive okay. Melody. But well, I think the name is primarily as such because I wanted something that I could use to play melodic phrases that was musical and that didn't get away in the way of if I wanted to all of a sudden play something rhythmic in the middle of a melodic phrase. All right, cool. Let's get Jay's take on it. So Jay, I, you probably couldn't even hear half of what he just said because it's rather loud in here. But um, you, you've been doing, this is like the third version of where you have the graphic EQs, right? Yeah, it is. That's the third actual production model. And then as Mark stated, we had revision one, we had revision two. I think we're on like 2.5 at this point. But we were just, yeah, we were just trying to tweak to make it to where he wanted it to go. And uh, I think we got there finally. I think we actually have one slight tweak that he's still kind of debating right now, but uh, but no. it, it's there. It's very close. And you said it's like a combination of the blue note and the dude. Is that what you said? Uh, it's it's more majestic-y um, than than those. I know we, we kind of tricked Mark a little bit, but no, okay. no, we didn't. <laughs> but it is more a little along the lines of animal meets majestic meets an EQ. And that's kind of what he would play through besides the dude. So that's where we went. Okay, there you go. It's got Blue No DNA in it. Yeah. Now, as uh, you know, the majestic, speaking of the majestic, this is just sort of to try and get to the heart of what this is about. Is the majestic, since it looks a lot like the Archer, is it similarly toned just with added flexibility or just cosmetic? No, yeah, that would just be cosmetic. We went through a phase that we liked that silverish chrome color, so we just did. So really no relationship at all, um, completely different tone circuit altogether. So, so how would you contrast the sound of Mark's new pedal with the Rockaway and the, I forget what the Q one is called, the IQ? IQ? Uh, well, the Rockaway is Archer based. Steve Stevens wanted an Archer okay. run, and he used to run that into an EQ. Whereas, as I stated just a second ago with the Melody, um, we're using the Majestic, kind of meets the Animal and Blue Note into an EQ. So they're completely different textures, a different type of gain. Now with the EQ itself, on, is it kind of the same approach bandwidth wise and how much plus or minus dB or whatever there is on each band or do you tweak the, I, the EQ on each of these pedals? Yeah, we don't voice each of the EQs uh, on, the, on the bands. We keep them all okay. uh, consistent so you can get kind of a you know, consistency throughout. If you have all three of these, you're not going to have one that's doing something funky in a certain band. Um, you know, they'll, they'll be, I guess, consistent is a good word, or predictable. That's what I'm trying to say. 
Okay. Standardized. Got, yeah, predictable and standardized. I couldn't come up with a word. Nice. Now, Mark, do you want to show us any other sounds you like out of the pedal? Yeah, man. So I leave it. That's primarily like my turn it on, don't ever touch it again for the gig kind of thing. So, you know, I'm playing a little fancy jazz chords there, but you can really dig in. So there's plenty of gain. Now, you know? did you adjust your volume knob or anything? Nope. I, I didn't notice. Nope. Oh, that's purely... Uh, so here, I'll do it again. So... I didn't touch anything. The volume's been full the whole time. Sweet. I didn't do anything except that. Just switch pickup. Yeah. So are there any other sounds you want to show us? Yeah. So one of the other things I was going to say that I like to use it is if you do stack pedals, the cool thing about the, the melody is that if you can, you can really change the character of anything after it just by altering the sliders, right? So if you want that to be like your pedal that you step on when you want a super unique lead tone, yeah. you can, here I'll show you. Okay. We were messing around with like a cocked wah kind of sound, which you can do. So you just take the bass out, give it the old kind of sad face. <laughs> the mids are super responsive on here, so so now it'll sound. Uh, whoops. So I'll even I'll make it even a little more. Okay. There we go. Let's see. I think that was. So it almost you know. I don't even know if that's how that song goes. It gets snarkier, no pun intended. It's in G, yeah. So then what you can do is like say if you have another pedal that you really like, but you don't want to get rid of it, like the dude, if that's your sound, if the dude sound, if you want to step on that, Almost, you know, you could do like a Brian May thing or something if you really want that mid-range kind of honky thing. So it totally changes the character of the dude. So it could be like your lead, your lead sound if that's what you wanted. And then awesome. of course you can reverse it. We were doing like a metal thing earlier with like the, the smiley face EQ, right. which was super fun. Um, or you can just go and set. Sometimes I'll just set it super randomly, just to make designs right. with the fun lights. Because who doesn't want to do that? So you could just do this. I don't even, this might sound like complete crap. I don't know, but it might be cool. Sounds great, man. Jay, so Jay was moving bands all over the place, but everything sounded cool. So, I mean, unless there's anything else you want to say about the pedal besides encourage people to go buy it, then we'll have Jay talk about the other pedal. I mean, it is a bit of a desert island pedal if, you're, if you are in a situation where you have a lot of backline amps that maybe you've never played before. This will help you get your sound out of whatever. Brad. Well, thanks for showing us, and, and I think we're going to have someone else pop in to play some of the other pedals. All right, guys, so we've reconfigured things here. We've got Chris Richards here who's going to play through these four new mini pedals you guys are doing, right? Yeah, we're calling them the anniversary series of pedals. They are uh, smaller in form factor. Um, we didn't skimp on any of the build quality or anything like that, and this is a line that we are trying to meet that $99 mark in retail. 
The first one we have is the squeegee, which is a compressor with a volume control and a compression. And we'll go ahead and uh, demo that for you now. So anything you want, else you want to say that, or should we move on to... Yeah, it's, it's like Dynacomp-based uh, uh, compressor that we tried to make extremely quiet and very squishy and usable. Cool. Sounded good. Thank you. Uh, the next is a touch. It's called the touch. It's an overdrive. Um, based on, I wouldn't say tube screamer, but in that general area. But I think Sort of a mid-boost? Yeah, yeah. But it can get fairly gainy. We'll go through that for you here real quick. Nice. Sounded really good. Yeah, thank you. This is kind of a unique pedal. The Steampunk is a, a booster with a built-in buffer. So inside the pedal, you can uh, there's a slide switch where you can actually engage the buffer, which will be noted on top of this LED will will be lit up. Uh, the interesting thing about that is when you disengage the boost, so you turn it off, that buffer still stays in the in the circuit if you have it engaged. So we'll we'll show you the the, the boost. Let's hear how nasty it gets when it's all the way up. You got it. Keep going. Sweet. All right. Last but not least, the Immortal. Yep. This is a this is a delay pedal. Um, so you have your general, you know, your main controls. You have mix, repeats, time, and tone. So the tone is obviously on the delayed note. Um, and we'll go ahead and show you everything at noon, and then I'll make some adjustments for you. What's the delay time available on it? Delay time will go all the way up to 680 milliseconds. Okay, cool. Does that mean it's an analog delay? Because that's often the breakoff point. But it's it's analog going into a digital chip circuit. But we made it very very quiet. A lot of these t uh, IC based, this particular IC based delays are very noisy. Um, this one is dead quiet. Cool, Chris. Very nice. You said all of these are 99 bucks? Yeah, that's our target. $99 for these, all four of them. Uh, well, street street price. Yeah, thank you. Uh, <laughs> by the way, by the way, is that the street price? Yeah, is that I'm asking. Price. I thought you said uh, sweet price. Uh, it's sweet price too. I can't hear. Um, but the juice joint is also something that we want to show. It's a, this is a power distributor, so you can take your power, your AC power, and power it into the in, and you will have filtered out of every single one of these outputs clean filtered power. So if you have a noisy power supply or if you just even need a daisy chain, this is a great option for those guys. So it's not actually providing it, it's filtering the power. That's, that's, that's what that's you're correct. saying? Correct. Yeah, it's cleaning the power that you provide into it. Okay. So it's got seven jacks? For yep. okay. And this is a link. You could use it as an extra output or you can put link more of these into your pedal board so if you need three or four of them that's no problem so the, there's no need to ask about the milliamps available on each one because it depends on your power supply this is just cleaning it up that's correct and it'll it'll uh whatever's whatever you have in your power supply that's what these uh, outputs are going to put out so 
Okay, and that makes sense. So how much is this going for? Uh, this one we're shooting between the $79 and $89 uh, dollar street price. Cool. Um, where do you want to tell people to go online to find out about this stuff and more? Uh, please go to www.rocketpedals.com. Sweet. Thanks for joining us, guys. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Jay. Later, guys.